And uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I guess uh, this is our new way of communication with uh, the pandemic that we're facing today. But uh, I do want to just start off to say, you know, the last three weeks has uh, been, you know, crazy for all of us. Uh, it's, a, it's a new way of life. There was a lot of unanswered questions. You know, in, in athletics, I think a lot of times we want to go into something prepared. And, you know, with this pandemic, I don't think any of us were prepared for this. Uh, so the blueprint of how we handle it and answer the questions is something that uh, we didn't have all the answers at that time. And we've worked our way through this since uh, the days I was three weeks ago in Kansas City dealing with the men's and women's basketball tournament. And then ultimately having teams back here in, in Morgantown about ready to leave on spring break and, and what we were doing with that. So, you know, the last three weeks I've kind of been offline trying to, you know, handle things not only here uh, at our own campus uh, at West Virginia, but also working with the Big 12, uh, working with uh, the NCAA on the committees that I serve uh, of trying to, to pan something out where we have a little bit of structure as we move forward. I think earlier this week, you saw that uh, the A5 conferences came out with a pandemic policy. Uh, we had worked on that the last couple of weeks through our conference commissioners, and then ultimately through the athletic directors, is to come up with some type of structure where our student athletes were not going to be here on campus. Uh, some uh, are, are here, some are obviously back at their homes and what can and cannot be done during that time period, and you know how long would that last. Uh, from the Big 12, we've extended that date to May 31st, understanding that that could be shifted if we needed that to be shifted, um, but at the same time as trying to create what you can do you know, with the student athlete from a coach's standpoint, and you know, in short, what we ultimately came out with is virtual meetings, uh, the film sessions, different things like that, that, that could happen. Uh, physical activity by video conferencing was not going to be permitted. We talked about the academic, the mental health, the physical well-being of our student athletes. Again, those can continue on as, as needed. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a new way of doing things for a lot of our student athletes. Some of our student athletes had online courses to begin with. And now, you know, everything is shifted online. So it's a, it's a new world for them and, and how we're going to, to work through that from an academic standpoint um, and support is, is something that we continue to, to look at as well. There's been a lot of discussions over the last uh, week about the financials. You know, what does this mean for the department? What does this mean for the Big 12? What did it mean for the NCAA? I think you saw that come out from the NCAA, what that meant from the NCAA tournament. And then turn, you know, the, the payouts to each conference and, and what that means to the Big 12. Um, the eligibility issues we've worked with, the spring sports and the winter sports. Uh, ultimately, that came to a head on Monday evening with uh, the NCAA Council uh, giving the authority to the, conf uh, to the institutions to extend the seasons of competition and the extension of the clock and financial aid uh, limits back to the institution to work through those. The financial aid limits would only apply for, you know, one season, uh, whereas the seasons of competition uh, and seasons of uh, the clock extension would apply to all student athletes, just not to the senior student athletes. And then, you know, last but not least by any means is, you know, the, the football oversight work that, that I work with the NCAA and just now that we understand where we're, we're set for the spring, unfortunately, we don't have the spring practices. We don't have the spring competitions. Uh, so now what happens from this point forward? What happens with summer? And then the outlook uh, for August and the start of football season in August. So needless to say, there's been a, a lot of meetings, a lot of discussions. You know, I've leaned very heavily on our own medical staff uh, here in Morgantown. Uh, Clay Marsh has been a, a, a terrific resource for me as a director of athletics. We've also leaned on the NCA, Dr. Hainline, to give us uh, insight and in, in what they understand about this pandemic and how long it would last. I think we're still in the beginning phases of the pandemic, to my understanding, uh, with uh, you know a peak sometime later this month or, or sometime in, in early May. 
And then hopefully after that, that peak, that we start getting back to some normal life as, uh, as we all know it before.